That's so fun. Yes, Whoa. mom. <laughs> <laughs> you can eat it. You can eat it. Yes, mama. <laughs> oh, you want this? You want a pinky? <laughs> she spits it right back out. Dead sign. Are your fingers cooler? You cute baby. I found the little pet shop collection. This is only a tiny fragment of so, so many that she has. There's so many. Everywhere you look, you're gonna find little pet shops. So my mom has her seashell collections and my dad has his collection of like history stuff and some of his history books and things like that. But he's also got a whole bunch of his own orchids and we're not really sure where it started. I think my mom just had an orchid that wasn't doing so well and my dad wanted to try really hard to bring it back. But now my dad has his own orchid hospital and people just bring him orchids that they can't make bloom and that seem to be dying. And he takes very good care of them and all he does is leave them in a room where they get a little bit of sunlight like this and gives them one third cup of water a week once a week uh, not ice but just one third cup of water he's instilled this in me quite insistently and his orchids bloom the whole house is full of orchids that people have given him and he's got his own little orchid set up up along the line as you can see as far down as it goes there's just beautiful orchids, so many of them. They're constantly in bloom all year round. No matter when I visit, there's blooming orchids. There's even little baby orchids. You can see he's got some over there. There's more in the hallway. There's some in the bathroom. They're just all over the place. And he has a little orchid hospital for the worst cases in the kitchen. He doesn't have any special gardening skills. He doesn't have any uh, like training. <laughs> really, it just kind of happened. But it's just so much fun to see all of the beautiful orchids that he takes care of. And every time I visit now, I try to bring another orchid or two and give them to him. So my sister is getting a secret one right now. She's gonna be bringing it home any minute. I'm really excited. And it's just fun. So when my parents visited a couple years ago and came to Ocracoke and we went as a trip together, them and I, and I got to visit with them and my niece is jumping off couches right next to me. So if you hear a very happy child, that's what's going on. But when they came to visit, they gave me an orchid and it almost died. And I was so heartbroken because it was beautiful. It was a very expensive gift for my family. I wanted to keep the orchid going. And this year my dad was like, just put it in the kitchen window, give it a third a cup of water. And that is the orchid that is now blooming at home two and a half years later and thinking that this thing was dead and just a bunch of green leaves for so long and it put up some stalks this year i just every wednesday throw it a cup of water now i have the beautiful orchid back and it's really fun because whenever i look at those orchids i not only think about the special trip my family made to come see me but i also think about the fact that it was a special gift from my parents and my dad taught me how to take good care of orchids so i really love it whenever i see orchids or I'm around them now, I just, I think of my daddy. And he told me he's getting ready to expand his orchid room. He's gonna start a second wing of his orchid, beautiful orchid display uh, in my little brother's room, since my little brother is moving out since he just got married. So I'm pretty excited to give him even more orchids to enjoy. Look at them. They're so pretty. This one just bloomed and my dad was so excited to show me all the different colors of the petals and the way that they have little dots and the different the different hues of purple. And he's got this pretty yellow one back here. Like I said, a lot of them, he's never, they're expensive, they're expensive. My family can't support like an orchid, uh, an orchid diet really, or an orchid hobby. But people will just bring him ones that just look like a bunch of leaves and they think it's dead. And then my dad takes care of them just very slowly and carefully, good lighting, good lighting. A little bit of water. Next thing you know, they're sending out another shoot, getting ready to bloom when everybody thought that they were just dead, not really gonna do anything. And instead, he's turned them into really beautiful flowers. Look at that. He likes the purple ones the best, but I think that these white ones are absolutely stunning too. And then this is Orchid Hospital, which I thought I would show you guys too. So he got this one recently, someone gave it to him, and it was just like all dead, and they didn't think it was worth salvaging, and there was like all sorts of mold on the roots. So this is the one that Daddy has in this special little container, isolated, so that it can be watched over and hopefully recovered. Like its little, its little leaf is all stiff right there from being damaged, poor thing. So Dad's watching it, but you can see already, there's a new leaf coming in right there. 
and he's just super patient with them and takes good care of them and the next thing you know the house is full of these beautiful beautiful blossoms and I just absolutely love that you guys I am so excited my sister just got back because I sent her and her husband on a secret mission to go and get one of those giganto orchids that we saw at the grocery store a couple days ago apparently this was one of two left if I could have this in my house I would in a heartbeat I wish I could special order one of these puppies I have never seen an orchid this big if you guys know what kind of orchid this is please let me know I have no idea it's amazing. I cannot wait to show my dad, but we're about to bring him in so that he can see it. And I am just so thrilled. I was just recording all of the bits about his orchids and how much it means to me to be able to see him grow them and how it adds in so much beauty into the house. And now my mom is calling me, so I'm going to show her this amazing plant. Okay, bye Mr. Thursday. I'm gonna miss you, handsome cat. I'm glad you were more than just a pair of eyeballs under the bed this time. You getting used to me again? I got you from the rescue. I was the one who did it. And now you're my brother's cute cat because he loves you and you love him. You guys have the same color hair. Yeah. Yeah, good cute cat. Bye bye. I'm gonna miss you. Miss Sunspot, it's been forever. How are you doing, ma'am? Not so sure? Am I a new person? Oh, Daddy's gonna give you head scratches. Yeah, is that the best? I hope you enjoy your new popcorn treats. I think you'll get used to them. <laughs> yeah. It's already time to go! Or at least leave from Columbia and go back to Kansas City with my sister and her husband because he has work in the morning and they're taking me to the airport on Tuesday. And I just feel so like this went too fast. I really wanted to show you guys so much of the color and the beauty and the love of my family this trip and there's so many deep things I want to be able to talk to you guys about to explain why I do so much work on our channels and it goes so beyond things like numbers or things like just getting series done and weaves in so deeply to the fact that I am I am the main nurturing source for so many members of my family providing what I can for them to help in really important key ways. Hiring aides to help my mom so that she and my dad can have a bit of an easier life, making sure my brother's taken care of. There's all those deep things that I want to be able to explain where the core of my love and my passion for what we do come from. And I feel like I've only scratched the surface at showing you guys the colorful rainbow of amazing just beauty that my family can have and it's chaotic and overwhelming and amazingly noisy and I forget that until I visit and I feel like I'm bowled over by like an entire herd of yelping puppies and you're just knocked around trying to get your feet under yourself when you live a quiet little contained life in your own personal green zoo but it's so loving and beautiful and I just hope that even if I didn't quite snag all of it, like the literal physical color that is surrounding me with my mom's Coptic markers and her fun, cheerful notes and my dad's kindness and the way he just shows up so attentively to give you a, a cup of tea, the way he got me so many of those amazing vegan meals just ready to go in the freezer for me when I got here. He remembered this time and that means so much to me. All of that. I've just barely scratched the surface at, at the treasures until I started recording and showing you guys a little bit of the snippets of what my family is like. I hadn't realized how my mom and I collect so many treasure pieces and we can tell you all sorts of fun facts about them. Like these little glass balls are marbles from the Sea of Japan uh, that used to be sea glass that had washed up and all of the like careful little seashells and the antique bowl from Hawaii that she got from my grandmother on my dad's side. and. There's story after story after story woven into everything in my family's home and there is just so much creativity and so much love and a lot of need that I need to take care of too. And when I work so hard, I do it because of these people and it's really surreal to not want to really share their faces and the details of their story. Their stories are not my story. My story is as their sister, my story is as their daughter, but not them. So there's certain things I can tell you guys the gist of. My mom is bedbound 
um, if she's lucky. We try to keep this room really clean and fun and full of all of her treasures so she can get in here once a month or so when she's strong enough to make it down the hallway. Uh, my niece is adorable and jumps all over and loves that I, I make videos and is my number one fan. And my sister and her husband are amazing and developing their life in Kansas City and now my brother and his new wife and my other brother and his awesome pets and I want to introduce you guys to all of these people the way I know them. And I want to do that through showing their beauty and their color and the heart that they have and how they have helped to shape me and how much they mean to me because that's why I do the work I do on my channel and that's why I create what I create and it's so much more than just rushing after numbers and so much more about trying to support people who really need it. So I want you to learn about their beauty and their color and their liveliness and their love and then as time goes on in the context of being their daughter and their sister I hope to be able to find other people I can finally talk with who can talk about what it's like when you live with chronically ill parents. Um, how scary it is when you look at your parent whose body is falling apart on them and their mind is starting to fall apart on them and they're barely 50 and you know that you have the same genetic thing they do and their mother did and their mother before her and you wonder how many years do I have left to even be semi-healthy? <laughs> Those are huge things though, and they're darker contrast to the rainbow beauty and love that is my family. And I want to show you guys that and show you why I work so hard. And that yeah, there's a lot of need there. There's not a support system on a state or federal level where my parents live to take care of them or to help them. I'm always worried about my brother and where his skills will be able to go and where he'll be able to develop. And those are real things, but they're they're heavier things, they're darker things, but they're part of what make the broad outlines of my life and determine what I do for our community and in our channel and why I want to live so vibrantly and richly and dash out into the world and work so hard so that I can bring back to my family the best of what I found. So I wanna be able to introduce you guys to the light of them first and the beauty of them first. And then as time goes on, like I said, where it's respectful and where it keeps within the boundaries of my perspective so I don't tread on their story or put things out there in the whole world that wouldn't be right to share because it's not my life. It's theirs and I'm their daughter and their sister, but not them. Then we'll figure out where we can have a conversation. But I think even those details don't matter as much as just showing you guys that there's a lot of love here. And there's a lot of need and I'm one of the fittest and the most successful of the bunch and that's why I work so hard because I like to turn around and share everything I have with them because I love them so much and they deserve it.